Are you sure? What kind do you like? Um, pancake syrup. Tamara, what kind of syrup do you like? Um, uh, loofah syrup. You sure it's not pancake syrup? No, maybe a squeeze of that on, but it's loofah. Pancake syrup. Pancake syrup. Pancake syrup. You know why? We're trying to start a trend worldwide. Everyone's got to say pancake syrup. Tamara, Tamara, Tamara's a punk. Loofah. Loofah. Turn it out. Try with Joe. The queers. Tamara, he's a punk, dude. Well, Frank. Looks like one of those long, hard ones. Tomorrow's a bug! Episode of the Sly One Radio Podcast, and that would be on PodunkRadio.com. That's right, fuckers. All right, man, so far we heard Amy Bumpkin, the theme song, and that song is called... The Sly One the Show. The Sly One Show. <laughs> you hey, sound I'm, like you're getting sick, Mr. Sly I'm sick of not getting hand jobs. Anyway, after that we heard my daughter talking about pancake syrup. We are trying to start a trend where someone or anyone, you know how like like a catchphrase. That's race, so fetch. That's so pancake syrup. That shit is so sick and ill like pancake syrup. Sticky shit, yo. So anyway, we're trying to start a trend. So wherever you are in the world, scream out pancake syrup and slap an ass. Anyway, Tamara. Came up with that, and uh, then we played by the Queers, the Queers, the band, the Queers. We're going on tour with Guttermouth, and I think Mr. Chris, our fearless leader, is going to get to go out to see them. Good for you, man. Hang in there. Have fun. We heard Tamara's the Punk by the Queers. Now, on this episode, we have a special guest. We have an interview, and who do we talk to? We are talking to Lauren Bizold from The Front, and 
If you've ever heard me talk about the front, you will know that I fucking love the front. Now, I just think they're fucking awesome, and Lauren is, like, a sweetheart, and she's just fucking wonderful. Yeah, we got to meet him at a queer show. But so, now, cool. the first, uh, the front song that we're going to play is called Snake Oil, and it's Snake off their Oil. album Snake Oil Salesman, Snake Oil. and I chose this song because I fucking love the bass line at the beginning of this song. So, uh, turn it up on podunkradio.com.
show, we're back. Well, well, we heard the front. Snake oil. Snake oil salesman. Uh, I think that was uh, produced and recorded by Joe Queer. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. What a small world. Anyway, man, that last song you heard was a band called The Smears. And the name of the song was called Handcuffs. Now, how- and Powder Puffs. Handcuffs oh, and, and powder, powder puffs. puffs. <laughs> anyway, how's everyone doing in the chat room? The Smears are from where? The Smears are from Nottingham over in the UK. Yeah, all not a kingdom. Um, they yo, are grunk, grunge punk. Yo, 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 yo crunk niggas. Um, the reason I played the Smears was because they Smear. are also, which you'll find out in our interview with Lauren. But our they're, interview. Shut up. Shut up. Why are you such a Come joke? on. They are also affiliated with Head Check Music Group, which Head. is the... <laughs> The label that the front is working with over in the UK. So. Awesome. Pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, Check out Head Check Music Group. So, the song that we're about to play is by the Fake Boys. The Fake Boys. And it's fake called... Fake Boys. This is, is our, our band. band. This is the Fake Boys, man. Turn it up on the Sly One Show. This is our band, the Fake Boys. This is Podonk Radio. This is the Sly One Show. Turn it up. Woop woop. Today's episode of The Sly One Show is brought to you by the letters F and U. You got that? F, U. Mr. Snufflegus, Mr. Snufflegus doesn't understand. He doesn't understand? Snarf, snarf. Anyway, we just heard the fake boys. The fake boys are a bunch of lads out of Massachusetts. Okay, man. A bunch. Record label, it says, a bunch. A gaggle of them. Anyway, they're a punk rock. We got Jim, Joe, Jay, and some douchebag I can't pronounce. Laos Drumini. Yo, yo, Laos, man. Yo, go English pronunciation, yo. Pronunciate. Anyway. Their about section says, we do what we want. Me too. I'm scratching my nuts right now. It really is. This episode is all about the front, yo. All about them. Hey, man. We were just talking. An A to B convo. While you guys heard the fake boys, and we were like... Yo, 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 yo. A to B, see your way out. See your way out, homie. Anyway, we do know the front d- does want to participate in the chat room. So maybe on a But re-air, unfortunately, they can't because they're playing a motherfucking show yeah, right now. They're staying busy, man, out there getting their name out. And they are about to go on tour in the UK, and we'll have some more show updates for you guys in their local area. But as of right now, they're doing a show. So they will catch a re-air, and we'll catch it on YouTube, man. The Front are a kick-ass band, and you need to check them out. Heather, what are we going into next there? Um, the song that we're going into next is called Fire Away, and guess who is by? Take one guess. You get one guess. My penis. That was the wrong guess. Oh, well, you said Fire Away. I hope that you didn't Hang wager on. all hey, your money, hey, Trebek. Hey, hey. Hope your mouth wasn't open. <laughs> All right, well, turn it up so you can Fire listen away, to bitch. Fire Away by the Front on front. podunkradio.com. The Slot One Show. Yeah, I'm a 
divided and quartered We're the pop culture casualties Generation reality, reality TV Without a clue of democracy The status quo depends on on our own ignorance And it, it thrives in our disinterest It beats as much as in the currency of loss This loss is all the gain Show podunkradio.com. This is Sly One. I'm here with Heather Sly One. Fuck yeah, man. Oh, right, man. Like we told you, we are on the phone with the front. Who do we have on the phone today, Heather? We have Lauren, who is the front lady of front the band lady. The Front. Um, Lauren, can you tell us where you are right now and what you're up to? Uh, yeah, I'm in uh, Aurora, Denver, uh, Aurora, which is in Denver, uh, Colorado. And um, I'm actually in uh, La Quinta. <laughs> All right. And you guys are uh, recording an album right now, correct? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, we're recording at Green Door Recordings. Um, we're recording a new uh, EP. Okay. Now, is this the first time you use this studio, recording studio, or uh, are you guys familiar with it? Yeah, actually, it is the first time. Um, uh, we had a friend, um, Miguel, uh, recommend it. Uh, he had a side band that had record, recorded at the Green Door, and I heard the record, and I really liked it. And so we decided to record here. Last time we did it at Drastic Sound, um, which is Matt Drastic from uh, T9 Old. But uh, he, lives in, he lives in Tennessee, and that is so far for us. We really wanted to do this record with him again, but for an EP, it just was not financially viable to right. travel all the way out there, you know? So, crazy, right? But I'm really, 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 so far, really happy with uh, the Green Door recording. Um, awesome. So far, it's going really great. So. so we're calling it, it's called Green... Green Door is the studio. Now, your album, you uh -huh. said you're calling it Casket, correct? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I, I, tentatively, I'm... Like ninety nine percent sure. Okay, we're yeah, call so, it so don't take that to the bank, listeners. Uh, hey, uh, <laughs> we we are on Podunk Radio, Lauren. Okay. Um, we okay. Would, we would like you to tell our listeners about the front. Give us the basic bio. You know, members in and out of the band, and what's going on today. Tell okay. Um, well, there's four of us now. We used to be a five piece. Um, we used to have another guitar player, but um, now there's four of us. Just, now we just have one guitar player. It's uh, it's kind of funny too because our band is all almost all family. Um, Steve and Mike are brothers. Steve and Mike is old. And then um, two years ago, I married Mike, so now I'm a bit old. <laughs> and he um, plays guitar, right? And, but he, he, yeah, um, Mike plays bass. And Steve plays guitar, and then Dustin, who is not a bit old, um, he plays drums, but he's like our kid brother. And then I sing. And you are an awesome singer. The uh, I think we saw, oh, thank you. <laughs> we saw you. I think we saw you twice when you were on the Queer Store there. I think we seen you what in Harrisburg and at the Auto Bar, and and you guys just killed it. You were very energetic on the stage. You know, no matter who was up front, you were trying to get him into the fucking music. You were grabbing him. You were having fun. Huh? Yeah, I definitely yeah. fell in love with you guys when I saw you guys on tour. That was fucking awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we, uh, 
we had a great time on that tour. That was a really, really funny tour. That was, um, yeah, it was really nice to meet you guys, too. Well, you're definitely you. people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all retarded here in Virginia. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> So, you guys are, uh, you're getting ready to go across the pond and go on tour in October here, correct? Can you tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, this is actually our second um, time going to the UK. Um, we did, yeah, I think it was 2011 that we went last time, or 2010, yeah. Um, and, yeah, we're going back over um, our buddy Mark, who run um, who runs Head Check Music Group, is bringing us over. He um, seems really nice. A lot of he is just one of the most wonderful people in the world. I feel, <laughs> and um, he he's really really great uh, as far as booking and taking care of everything. There's not like a balance that you can't kind of overcome as far as like booking and all the logistics. And so, um, and he's just a really, really great guy. He runs, um, uh, all female fronted label there. Yeah. And, um, that's why Heather loves cool it. Too. Yeah, all, all the are incredible that he, uh, we're really honored to be part of the roster too because all the bands he's got are just really, really talented. Um, and we're touring with a band again um, that we got to tour with last time called Goal Fixer, and they're they're just amazing. They're pretty like hard punk. Um, the vocalist is insane. Her voice is super rad, and it's cool, man. It's weird, like in England, um, like being a woman or a man isn't an issue. Age isn't an issue. It's like whoever is the best musician, that's like who they pick to be in their band. You know, yeah, I before the front tried out for a bunch of bands, like, and no one, even though I was a better vocalist, they wouldn't let me be in their band because I was a girl. You know, yes. and in England, there it's like that's not an issue. Women are taken just as seriously, like music musician wise, as men are. Um, there are people, what was cool there too is it's like there were people in a band together and one dude would be like 60 and the other dude would be 18 and it didn't matter, you know? It just was like about making music, right. about making good music and leaving all that other bullshit like off the stage, you know? So hey, hey, let's, it's, a, let's... It's, a, it's a different experience. I think that um, the punk scene, especially right now, is really, 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 like, male predominant, and it was really inspiring to go to England and see so many incredible female musicians and see the scene support that, you know? That's what I was going to ask you, Laura, and I was going to be like, from, from, from playing here in the U.S. and the States, which is fun and we all love it, we all love to play. Oh um, yeah, most definitely. But, like, when you go over across the pond and perform, I mean, is, is it a different atmosphere? Does, does it feel like you're welcome, welcome with open arms and you're like, wow. I mean... Yeah, it's, um, well, I think punk rock there is different than it is here. Um, punk rock is, like, part of their heritage, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm from Wyoming. And so, obviously, like, cowboy music or whatever is a big deal. Like, country music is a big deal in Wyoming. There, their whole, it seems like their whole country is, like, really proud of punk rock. Like, it's not a fad. It's not something that, you know, comes in and out of favor. It's like a, it's like a lifestyle. And it's part Definitely. of their heritage. Yeah. You know? So... It's, it's not something that they ever give up on. You have, you know, grandmas with pink hair and a sex pistol shirt on. Like, they just don't give up on it. Like, like you know, sometimes punk rock here is a fad. There it's not. It's, 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 it's part of their heritage and part of their culture. Yeah, I, I so that's have... an incredible thing to see. You 
now. I bet. I mean, I, I hope someday I get to go over there and do what you guys are doing, which I praise you, man. That That is great. I'm so happy for you. A lot of people get, je a lot of people get jealous and be like, oh, fuck them, bro. You know, fuck that, man. You guys are doing great, and I love it. <laughs> So, yeah, well, you know, we've also been a band for, oh, man, I'm not going to be wrong. I'm going to say 12 years. Wow. <laughs> like, we've been a band for a very long time. We've always put out our music on our own. Um, and so we, we are very grateful that we get to do this, but we've put in a lot of hard work to get to this point, you know? Here. So. Here's some stuff I was thinking about, like when we seen you in Harrisburg. This, uh -huh. what you guys were doing, is a really good idea. All the bands, all the listeners, any musician, take this up. This is good. The front came up with this. Uh, a young man from your band came. I think it may have been your husband. He came up and said, yeah. "If you give us a dollar or two, you can spin this wheel." <laughs> And it's, yeah. it's kind of like shoots and ladders or something like that. You flick the little thing, and then whatever it lands on is what you win. Well, I got yeah, I, yeah. I, I won Snake Oil Salesman. I think that's the name of the album, right? Yep, yeah, uh, totally. That is awesome. And a hell of a goddamn idea. I mean, Christ. I mean, you yeah. can walk around a bunch of drunkards and be like, hey, give us two bucks. Fuck yeah, give us some yeah. gas money. He's a bit of a genius. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Totally. You guys are in Wyoming. Let me ask you a quick question. Um, when you guys were doing the whole Queers tour and shit, um, how did you happen to come to know Mr. Joseph, Mr. Joe, Mr. King? And, uh, and then, you know, kind of like me, I, pro I went and recorded. You guys recorded with him, you know? I mean... Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So how did you... Yeah, um... Well, we, uh... Gosh, in, I think, 2000... Maybe um, we entered a con it's a kind of a long story, so bear with me. Fun, um, huh? We entered a, a contest with Alternative Press, um, and it was to play Warp Tour, and they would do it by regions. Okay. And we had won our region, and then um, and we just just gone along with the eight, the pe Alternative Press people at the time really well, and. Um, and then that at that year they decided to decided to do a winter work tour, and um, which which they never did again, oh, um, which yeah, is unfortunate. Yeah. But the winter work tour had uh, let's see um, the Suicide Machines, TSOL, and the Queers, and, and did um, have the they couldn't find uh, they had an opening band and they flaked out, so they called us and asked us to do it. And, um, and that's how we met the queers was on that tour. And we just have kept in touch. Joe and, um, Joe and our guitar player Steve just really got along really well and never lost touch and always kind of kept in touch with each other. And, um, every time they were in the area, we would go play with them and that's awesome. we open for them. And, um, yeah, we just have never lost touch. And, well, so when well, the keep Joe going. offered to pr produce our record, we were really happy to do it. And when um, that tour came along, uh, God, some band was supposed to open. Was it like what, what was the name of that band? It was uh, was it uh, Christ? What yeah, was it? They're on Fat Band. They're on Fat. I can't. It's remember right here. Hang on, hang on. It's uh, he's looking. <laughs> no, it was. I can't. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember for the life of me. Um, but. They, uh, Joe had a falling out with his booking agent, and they dropped off the tour, I yeah. think, to, to win favor with the booking agent, <laughs> and so just called and was like, do you, want to, do you guys want to do this tour? I need an opening band, and we were like, of course, <laughs> and it was a total blast. <laughs> so, so this is the Sly One Show. Hey, Lauren, we're going to go into a uh, song off a of Snake Oil Salesman. What should we play, hon? Oh, shit. Uh... Let's play uh, all here. Okay, uh, say it okay. again. This is the front. We're playing all hands on it. Let's play the front. This is the silent show. Turn it up on P or P Radio. Just 
This is the Slime and Show. Ooh, we have the front on the phone. We have Lauren. How are you doing again, Lauren? I'm good. Awesome. Hey, uh, quick question. We were, t- of course, always. Everyone knows I'm die-hard queers fan. F- you know, friends with Joe. Blah blah blah. Everyone knows that. But besides that, what it, what are your band's influences? Like bare knuckle. I mean, when you were growing up, what did you listen to? Um. <laughs> Well, our band has a lot of different, it's kind of funny because we all listen to, there's a few bands we can all agree on, but then we all listen to totally different things. I I really, really love female front of bands, obviously. Um, like, one of my favorite bands is the Luna Chicks. I love Tilt, um, Bikini Kill, uh, uh, anything female fronted. Um, I love, love, love The Clash. Is probably my, my one of my all time favorite Hell bands. Yeah. Um, Mike kind of likes more um, rock and rolly kind of stuff. Like he loves the New York Dolls and more rock um, and roll. kind of more stuff like that in that vein. Super rock and roll. Um, Steve loves like, yeah, like the Melvin and he likes hardcore. Sick of it all. Um, Dustin likes hardcore as well. Dustin gets kind of metal y, you know. Yeah. Um, he's into like uh, the super, super heavy shit. And and I think we all like can agree on like the Ramones and, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that, you know. But we're kind of all over the map on like what our influences are. Hey, is it and like- I think that's what kind of gives us that like kind of unique sound that we have, you know. I have, I have one weird oddball question that we can air or we don't have to air. Um, when we were in Harrisburg at the Spy Club, of course we were talking to you, we were talking to your husband, there was another man uh-huh. there, and then your drummer came up and you're like, make sure you get, because I was recording it audio and video, and you were like, uh-huh. you were like, get him on video, he hates that. <laughs> <laughs> So so has he got has he gotten past that? Has he is he getting more used to the limelight? <laughs> he's just a shy kid. <laughs> I think he's getting more used to it, but yeah, he's just kind of a shy dude. <laughs> yeah, he he seemed real nice. I like the guy. Okay, Heather, take it away. All right. Now you mentioned that you really like female fronted bands, and that uh-huh. that Mark, the uh, head of your label. That's what he signs as female front of bands. Now, how did you get associated with Head Check Music Group, and how did you meet Mark? Um, Mark used to own a, a management company called um, God. I'm gonna I'm gonna be an asshole. Let me think. It was called um, Still Dying. That's right. Um, and he, back in the MySpace days, he had uh, added us. Uh, I don't know, friends or whatever, and um, sent a message like, hey, I really did your music, and blah, 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 and I'm glad I, I'm glad I sent your site or whatever, and um, I was like, cool, uh, any chance we could go to England? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, are you serious? And I was like, yes, and he's like, probably, and it just worked out, yeah, it was, it was crazy, like one of those weird chance things like that never happened but it worked out for us and you know we were worried I mean he could have been worried that we would like and we were kind of worried like god we've never met this guy what if he likes but it all worked out like totally awesome so we really lucked out 
That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, one of those chance things you take, like, oh, is this going to be real? Is it going to be what we yeah, expect? Totally, but I'm, totally. I'm definitely glad it worked out for you guys. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's one of our, like, you know, you, you, you do this band thing, and part of the best part about it is the great people you get to meet, and Mark and his family are definitely, like, one of the top, like, wonderful people we've met doing this, and we're really grateful that we got the chance to even just be friends with him, you know? He's a lovely person, so... That's awesome. Now, yeah. I have seen on Facebook recently you talking about Derby Boutique that you just opened. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Can you just tell tell our listeners some more about that? How that came to be? How how it's going? What kind of boutique it is? Okay. Um, well, it's kind of something I've always wanted to do, and um, I manage the Derby Boutique and Casper for like two and a half, over ten years, and um, I kind of fell out of. Um, my boss and I had a falling out, and I decided it was time to leave and go do my own thing. And at first, I was like, oh, I might just get a normal job. And then I looked at what kind of jobs I could get, and I was like, God, I can't do any of this. <laughs> like, I could, but I just couldn't, like, do the cute whole thing, you know? And um, so I was like, fuck it. I don't have kids. I don't, you know, like, I'm at this place where I'm still young enough. I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it a shot. It's something I've always wanted to do. So, uh, yeah, Mike and I opened up, like, it's a boutique. It's all men, women, and so, like, baby clothes. And Mike refurnishes, like, old retro furniture. We carry, like, kind of vintage-style clothing and some punk rock clothing and just kind of, you know, cool shit. And it, the town we're from is, like, pretty small. And there's nothing like that, like, in the downtown area. So we thought we'd give it a shot and see if our town can support it or not. We'll find out soon enough, I guess. But so far, it's been going really, really well. It's cool. It's um, And it's actually named after um, Derbyshire, which is the, the area uh, in England that we were kind of staying during the time. Right. And it's... It's just a really, really beautiful, rad part of England. And um, so we kind of named it after the, the city, Derby, and the, the kind of providence of Derbyshire. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I've seen some of the, like, dresses and stuff that you've posted, and they're all super cute. I would love oh. to come visit <laughs> you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cool to, like, I don't know, man. It's cool to kind of channel that part of me. Um you know, being in a band with all dudes and being on the road and, like, making music and all that, like, it's sometimes gnarly, you know, like, you're living in a van and, and you're, you know, just with dudes and you smell and they fart and all that, you know, <laughs> it just comes with the territory, but it's cool to, like, channel this kind of, like, feminine part of me, you know, that I never really have put into, like, a business, you know, situation. I've always loved fashion and stuff like that, but um, I've, I've kind of just, it's cool to make that, like, kind of more upfront in my life, you know? Right. Because the band is so, like, kind of gnarly, you know? <laughs> so it's cool to have, like, this opposite, and I get to, like, let out of me. So, yeah, it's been fun. Really cool. Yeah, you get to uh, explore your your girly side that you don't exactly get to do when you're on tour totally. and, and playing shows yeah, and stuff. Yeah, which a lot of times I gotta kind of like put that side of me in check, you know, just so you can like put up with touring and you know, like you can't always be as like feminine as you'd like to be on the road and right. stuff. So it's cool. It's cool to let that side of me kind of out. So that's awesome. All right, well, listeners, you have just heard our interview with Lauren from The Front. We're going to go into another song by The Front called Low Income Love. Turn it up on podunkradio.com. Baby, we don't have much, but when pulls come to shove, we still got yeah, low income love. We don't have much, when pulls come to shove, we still got low income love, baby, we don't Sweet 
We are back. That song that you just heard was called Low Income Love by The Front. Now, The Front has a local show coming up in September, next Friday, the 25th at 9 p.m. It's at the Rail Yard Casino and Ale House. It's in Billings, Montana. So, Montana, get ready to fucking rock with The Front. The show starts at 9 p.m., like I said. It's a $5 cover, and it is 18 and over. Hail to the yeah. Is it hammer time? We got some MC Hammer coming up, Heather? We don't have MC Hammer. However, we do have a band called Home Movies. They Home used movies. to be... Uh, Suburban the Suburban Losers. losers. Yeah, it's um, band. Hell yeah, guys. So it's a local band to us. Um, yeah, and Home Movies, we're going to play their song called Groundhog's Day. Groundhog's Day. Turn it up on the Sly One Show on podunkradio.com. Yeah. Home Movies.
Ladies and gentlemen, that song that you just heard was Immaculate by a band called Sub X. Sub X is uh, from Dayton, Ohio. Their influences are rock and roll and free beer. Uh, looks like their members are Mitch on vocals and guitar, Nick on drums, Angus on lead guitar and vocals, and Frizz on bass. Uh, looks like they have been a band since early 2006, and they have independently released an EP called Shotgun Hero, two three-song demos, and supported themselves on five, five tours. Um, looks like currently the band is working on a six-song EP, still untitled, and it should be released uh, really soon here. The artists that they also like are Rancid, Valiant Thor, Red Fang, High on Fire, Black Tusk, The Unseen, Electric Frankenstein, Skid Row, The Heart Attacks, and Motley Crue. Um, this next song that we're going to play is by a band from Italy called Milk Snake. I'm sure you've all heard of them. And the song is called My Boyfriend. Turn it up on Sly One Show.
That song that you just heard was Corner Walker by The Front. Um, the next song you're going to hear is Dave Navarro's Goatee Fucking Sucks by The Bugs. Mr. Slavin, what do you think about The Bugs? Uh, Dangerous Dave's in that band. He's from San Diego. He's kind of cool. That's all you think about The Bugs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dave. Dave's a sarcastic fuck. I think he's scared of uh, Bob from Runebega Suicide. I think, no. <laughs> I think he's scared of Bob's driving. <laughs> More than Bob himself. <clears throat> well, after that show, he was like, oh, so who's driving us to the airport? It's not him again, is it? I was like, why? He's like, well... Like, he was trying to... And then he said, has he been drinking? Like, yeah. hoping that yeah, Bob like, had hoping been drinking, Bob so he had an excuse. Wasn't drinking Coors Cutter that night. Bob's, Bob walks over, no, I had them especially marked that I couldn't drink in my hand. And Dave was like, fuck! <laughs> hey, this is the Bugs. Dave Navarro's a fucking douche. Turn it up on the Sly One Show.
she had cut my charmer, cut my charmer. Lucky fucks just got a double dose of the fucking Sheckies. Uh, the first Shecky song that we played was Pop Punk Message Board. And uh, I think it's pretty fitting because that fucking Pop Punk Message Board is fucking gay. And if you go over there and mention that you're friends with Sly One or like Sly One or think that the cock blocks are awesome, you will probably get banned. And not just your username gets banned, but your entire IP address will get banned immediately. Uh, the second song that we played from the Sheckies is called Cut Marks. Now, the song that we're about to go into is a uh, it's an unreleased track from the front. It's from their new EP called Casket, and the song is also called Casket. Um, I think it's a pretty fucking awesome tune, so turn it up on the Sly One Show. Sense of the 
Hey Po Dung Chat. Hey Po Dung Chat. Hey Po Dung Chat. What did you think of that that song? Did you like it? Tell me what, what you that, fucking that, thought. It was Casket by the Front. Oh, unreleased track. That's their unreleased track. It, it was unmastered. Uh, Lauren just yeah, 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 emailed yeah, that yeah, over yeah. to me. Now, I don't so, know about the rest of Mr. you. Chris, Mr. Chris just IN me like right now, Chris. This is when this happened. You said, when will you think you'll have the show dropped? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I, I, I said in a few minutes, but normally when I say that, it's like three weeks from now the show fucking comes. So I know that's what you're thinking. Yeah, I bet three weeks, you fucking asshole. Watch your coffee, don't knock it over. <laughs> so anyway, I forgot what I was going to say, but it was going to be funny. Oh, I, we're going to get out of here, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, we got to go. Fuck it. Turn it up. It's the Bloody Muffs with Gotta Go. Yeah, I gotta go. I, I got these bumps on the back side of my balls, and my mom says she's gonna check them out for me. Heather's afraid, too. Uh, Bloody Muffs, New York City, dude. Gotta go, bitch. <laughs>